Today's episode takes us on a journey through time and terror to Deception Island. As we unravel this tale, remember to like, subscribe, and embark with us into a realm of mystery and the unexplained with the historical events and stories we share. The Early Discovery of Deception Island Through Henry Palmer's Eyes Our story begins in 1820 with American sailor Henry Palmer. Now, imagine the cold Antarctic winds and the uncharted waters as Palmer and his crew set foot on a desolate island. The awe of discovery quickly turns to unease. Palmer feels an eerie presence, a sense of being watched, a foreboding that creeps into the hearts of his men. For the longest time, Palmer refused to make the grisly details public of what happened, finally revealing the disturbing events that took place shortly before his death in 1877. Through his eyes, we experience the island's haunting beauty and the palpable fear that something unknown is lurking. The mysterious disappearances. The second night brings a chilling turn. Two crew members, Norris and Clark, vanish without a trace. Palmer's decision to search leads them to a sinister cave. Here we narrate Palmer's harrowing discovery, the gruesome state of Norris and Clark, the unsettling red stones clutched in their lifeless hands. Some of Palmer's own words paint a vivid picture of the horror they faced, a mystery that he would take to his grave. Before we dive into Henry Palmer's haunting account of his experiences on Deception Island, it's important to note that we've taken the liberty of transcribing original words into contemporary English. This adaptation is intended to enhance clarity and ensure that the essence of his story is conveyed in a way that resonates with our modern audience. While the language has been updated, the chilling experiences and the profound impact of his journey, as he described them, remain untouched. Now, let's hear Palmer's tale in his own words, brought to life for the 21st century viewer. As I set foot on the shore of what I later named Deception Island, a sense of unease immediately washed over me. I've landed on many shores throughout my years at sea, but never had I felt such an unsettling atmosphere. It was as if unseen eyes were piercing through the fog, watching our every move. We set up camp just above the high tide, the evening air growing colder as the light dimmed. Something about the island felt off, almost as if we weren't alone, despite no sign of human life besides the wildlife. That first morning is etched in my memory. I was sipping my coffee when a shout broke the stillness Norris and Clark were gone. Their absence was a shock. They knew better than to wander off without notice. I quickly organized search parties, arming them and emphasizing caution. We didn't know what we were dealing with, and I feared the worst. As my group walked along the beach, we stumbled upon a clue human footprints leading towards a rocky outcrop, accompanied by what looked like dragged marks in the sand. A sense of dread filled me. Up ahead, a cave entrance beckoned ominously. I instructed my men to be ready, the tension palpable among us. Although we were sailors, not warriors, I had seen enough death in the War of 1812 to last a lifetime. That experience left me with a grim intuition, a feeling of impending doom that had saved my life more than once. Entering the cave first, I steeled myself for whatever lay within. The darkness enveloped us, the faint light from outside barely penetrating the gloom. As we ventured deeper, the eerie sound of moaning echoed off the walls. My men lit their candles, their flickering light casting ominous shadows. Rounding a corner, the scene before us halted me in my tracks. There, on the cold ground, lay the bodies of Norris and Clark, their skin gruesomely removed, looking as if they had been turned inside out. One of them, barely alive, looked up at me with terror in his eyes clutching a brilliantly red stone, unlike any I had ever seen. I instructed my men not to touch the stones, fearing they were cursed or worse. We carried the bodies back to camp for a proper burial, but answers eluded us. The men were scared, some whispering of the devil's work, others of witchcraft. The next day, as we prepared to leave, we discovered the graves of Norris and Clark had been emptied. Who or what? could have done such a thing was beyond my comprehension. It was then I decided we must leave immediately. The island, I realized, was a place of evil, 
a deception in its purest form. As we sailed away from that cursed land, I vowed never to return. The mysteries of Deception Island were too dark, too dangerous to meddle with. It remains a place shrouded in terror and enigma, a warning to all who dare approach its treacherous shores. As we reach the end of the mysterious tale of Henry Palmer and his eerie experiences on Deception Island, it's time for a moment of reflection and clarification. Here at Facts Intrigue, we thrive on exploring the thin line between reality and fiction, and this story has been no exception. So let's address the burning question, fact or fiction? The character of Henry Palmer and his chilling adventures are in fact a work of fiction, a creation woven to add intrigue and depth to the mystifying aura of Deception Island. Our research into the island's rich history revealed no records of a sailor named Henry Palmer encountering such mysterious and horrific events. This narrative was crafted to capture your imagination and bring a sense of mystery to the already fascinating story of Deception Island. But make no mistake, Deception Island itself is very real. Located in the South Shetland Islands near Antarctica, it's known for its unique geology, historical significance in whaling, and as a site for scientific research. The island's captivating landscape and intriguing past are indeed factual, but the tale of Henry Palmer is our way of paying homage to the art of storytelling, blending fact with fiction for your entertainment. As the echoes of Henry Palmer's harrowing experience on Deception Island fade into history, the island itself slips back into a shroud of icy silence. For decades, it remains a place of speculation and myth, its secrets buried under the Antarctic snows and its lore whispered among seafarers and adventurers. But our story doesn't end here. Fast forward to 1957, a year that marks another chilling chapter in the island's enigmatic history. This time, it's a group of Australian scientists who find themselves drawn to Deception Island's mysterious allure. Unbeknownst to them, they are about to tread into a realm of inexplicable events and unsolved mysteries, echoing the haunting experiences of Palmer's crew. Let's delve into the 1957 expedition, a journey that would once again stir the silent whispers of Deception Island. The 1957 expedition, through Richard McCready's eyes. Fast forward to 1957. We now follow the journey of Richard McCready and his team of Australian scientists. Through McCready's diary entries, we witness the strange occurrences that begin to unfold. Team members act bizarrely, whispers of unseen entities circulate, and the eerie sense of being watched returns. The tension builds as McCready discovers the same red stones that haunted Palmer's expedition. His fear and confusion mirror that of Palmer, drawing us deeper into the island's mysteries. Richard McCready's account of the 1957 expedition to Deception Island. It was the summer of 1957 when we, a team of Australian scientists, found ourselves on the shores of Deception Island. I, Richard McCready, an American by birth, had joined this expedition driven by a blend of scientific curiosity and, I must admit, a sense of adventure. The moment my boots crunched onto the gravelly beach, a chill ran down my spine, and it wasn't just the Antarctic cold. There was something about the island, an eerie silence that seemed to whisper secrets from the past. I remembered tales of Henry Palmer's expedition over a century ago, but I pushed those thoughts aside, focusing on our scientific objectives. As the days unfolded, the island's desolate beauty was both captivating and unnerving. We set up our base near an old whaling station, the rusted remnants of the past standing as silent witnesses to our endeavors. Then, things began to take a strange turn. It started subtly. My colleagues Ian and Ross, both geologists, became increasingly fixated on a set of peculiar red stones they had found near a volcanic vent. They would spend hours, even late into the night, examining these stones, whispering to each other in a way that seemed off. Their behavior became more erratic, and one morning, they were nowhere to be found. Protocol dictated they inform someone of their whereabouts, but they had vanished without a word. 
A sense of deja vu crept over me, a chilling reminder of Palmer's story. We searched, calling their names against the howling wind, but they were gone, swallowed by the island. That night, a palpable sense of dread settled over the camp. I lay in my bunk, the wind's mournful howls echoing my mounting fear. The next day, as I walked along the shore, a sense of foreboding overwhelmed me. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, stalked even, by something unseen. I thought of Palmer's tales, of unseen eyes and unspoken horrors, and wondered if we were walking in their footsteps. Our search for Ian and Ross proved fruitless. The island was keeping its secrets. And then, the unimaginable happened. We discovered the unthinkable in the heart of the island, a sight so horrific that it haunts me to this day. There, in a hidden cavern, illuminated by the flickering light of our torches, lay the bodies of Ian and Ross. But they were altered, unrecognizable, their skin removed, their bodies twisted in an unnatural manner. Those accursed red stones were scattered around them, glowing ominously in the dim light. The realization hit me like a freight train, we were not alone on this island. Whatever forces had claimed Palmer's men had returned, or perhaps they had never left. We left the island post-haste, leaving behind our equipment, our research, and a part of ourselves. The island had changed us, instilling a fear that no scientific rationale could dispel. As we sailed away from Deception Island, I couldn't help but look back, half expecting to see something watching us depart. But there was only the cold, silent island, shrouded in its eternal mystery. To this day, I'm haunted by the memories of that expedition. Deception Island, a name so apt, it chills me to the bone. It's a place where reality warps, where the past bleeds into the present, where the inexplicable reigns. I've shared my story, but I know it's just one piece of the island's unfathomable puzzle. Theories and speculations, the red stones. What were these red stones? We delve into theories ranging from scientific explanations about volcanic minerals to local legends speaking of cursed artifacts. Experts weigh in, but the stones remain an enigmatic piece of the island's puzzle. Before we continue, if you have not subscribed yet, would you take the time to do so now? Please subscribe, like, and leave us a comment on if you think the red stones are the cause of death to those who possess them. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of Deception Island, one enigma stands out. The mysterious red stones found in both the accounts of Henry Palmer and Richard McCready. These stones, imbued with a sense of dread and awe, have become a focal point of our exploration. What could they be? Harmless geological formations or cursed artifacts steeped in legend? Let's explore the theories. We're first joined by Dr. Emily Hansen, a renowned geologist, to shed light on the scientific perspective of these mysterious stones. Dr. Hansen, what can you tell us about these red stones? Well, from a geological standpoint, Deception Island is fascinating. It's an active volcano, and such volcanic regions often yield a variety of unique mineral formations. The red stones described could be a form of jasper or agate, common in volcanic areas. These minerals can have deep red hues, caused by the presence of iron oxides. However, without analyzing the stones directly, it's hard to confirm their exact nature. Thank you, Maria. It seems the red stones are a crossroads of science and superstition. On one hand, they could be mere volcanic minerals. On the other, they could be symbols of an ancient curse as per local lore. To further explore this mystery, we obtained further information from a volcanologist, a cultural anthropologist, and a paranormal investigator. Each brings a unique perspective to the table. Here is the information provided. From the volcanologist, they felt these stones could be key in understanding the volcanic activity on Deception Island. Their composition might reveal seismic changes or even predict future eruptions. What did an anthropologist conclude? From an anthropological viewpoint, they felt these stones are a fascinating insight into the human tendency to imbue natural objects with supernatural qualities, especially in isolated and extreme environments like Deception Island. 
what about the paranormal investigator? We were advised by the investigator not to discount the possibility of unknown energies or phenomena. Many locations with high paranormal activity are associated with specific geological features. So the mystery of the red stones remains unsolved. Are they simply minerals formed by natural processes, or do they hold a deeper, possibly supernatural significance? It seems Deception Island keeps its secrets well hidden, leaving us to wonder and speculate about the true nature of these enigmatic stones. What about the island today? A modern perspective. Do people visit Deception Island now, one viewer asked? Yes, but it's a shadow of its past. We researched the present day island. For starters, people do not permanently live on Deception Island today. The island, located in the South Shetland Islands near Antarctica, is uninhabited in terms of permanent residence. However, it is a site of interest for scientific research and tourism. Deception Island has a fascinating history, including periods when it was used for whaling and as a scientific outpost. The island is known for its unique horseshoe shape, which is the result of it being the caldera of an active volcano, and this geological feature creates a natural harbor known as Port Foster. Today, the island is frequented by scientists conducting research, particularly in fields like biology, geology, and volcanology. The island's unique geothermal activity, wildlife, and historical remnants from its whaling days also make it a popular destination for cruise ships visiting Antarctica. Tourists are drawn to the island's dramatic landscapes, the possibility of seeing various species of seabirds and seals, and the opportunity to explore historical ruins. Despite these activities, no one resides there year-round due to the harsh Antarctic conditions and the island's remote location. The research activities and tourism are seasonal and dependent on the weather and sea conditions. As mentioned earlier, it is however now a site for occasional scientific expeditions and those brave tourists willing to visit. Its abandoned whaling stations and research bases stand as silent reminders of its mysterious history. The legacy of Deception Island is a tapestry of fear, curiosity, and unresolved mysteries. We reflect on how these tales have shaped perceptions of the island and continue to inspire explorers, scientists, and storytellers. The island's enigmatic past challenges us to question the boundaries of our understanding. As our journey to Deception Island concludes, we're left with more questions than answers. The island's silence hides a past filled with unexplained phenomena a reminder of the mysteries that still lie beyond our grasp. Thank you for joining us on this haunting voyage to Deception Island.